So in the beginning, before time and form, before creation, when there was only potential, the potential is described as being an ocean of milk or deluge. So in this ocean of pre-creation potential, Brahma, who represents this principle of creativity or of creation, Brahma sat in meditation, prepared to begin the process of creating manifestation. And as Brahma began meditating on creation, he realized that there would be utter chaos or that perhaps creation couldn't even begin without knowledge. Knowledge is necessary for creation. And that there also would be a requirement in manifestation, in creation for organization, for pattern. And so in the midst of this meditative realization of the requirement for organization and knowledge in order for creation to exist, from his forehead sprung his own shakti, his own inner power of creation. That shakti sprung from his forehead and her name was Satarupa. Satarupa was this creative force or power of knowledge, pattern, organization, wisdom, and sound. Her form was beautiful, very appealing. Brahma was incredibly drawn to the form that had sprung from his forehead and immediately enamored. He wanted to attain that form and he could not stop gazing at this Satarupa. So he looked in front of himself and in front of us is considered the east. And so he looked east and there she was and she did not want to be gazed at. And so she moved from the east to the north and he turned his head to look north. And as he turned, he sprouted another head in the northern direction. And again, not wanting to be captured by his gaze, then she moved to the west and he sprung up ahead to the west. And so not wanting to be captured by his gaze, she moved again to the south and again he sprung up ahead to the south in order to continue to try to capture her with his gaze. And so in that moment, he had four heads, one in each of the cardinal directions. And so having nowhere else to go on this plane, she sprung up into the air and she sprung into space. And then he sprouted a head above, a fifth head. And then she prayed for protection to not be captured by Brahma's gaze. And Shiva appeared. And with his trident, he struck off, sliced off the head, the fifth head into space of Brahma. And when that was done, this Satarupa was then free, able to be completely independent, her own creative force. And when that fifth head of Brahma was sliced, he gathered himself again and realized his mistake, which was that he was attempting to attain or capture or hold on to wisdom and attain or capture or hold on to creativity as though creative force or the force of wisdom can be held on to, owned, attained. Part of the lesson of this uh, story is that the creative force, that creative Shakti and the force of wisdom is not something to be um, grasped or held on to. It is not something that can be owned. And what happened when Brahma realized this is that rather than try to grasp Satarupa, he bowed in reverence and he said, please be my teacher. So Brahma became the student, Saraswati became the teacher. And evermore, it was understood that wisdom is always independent. 
And so you may have heard that the, um, the, the pair, Brahma and Saraswati, go together like consorts or like a couple. In fact, they're different than the uh, relationship between, say, Shiva and Parvati, who are married, or Vishnu and Lakshmi, who are married. Brahma and Saraswati are not married in that way. There is a partnership there, but it is the partnership between teacher and student. And Saraswati is actually usually shown completely independent, alone. And she is completely happy and satisfied, alone and independent. And this is the fruit of true wisdom, to be completely, utterly satisfied in your independence, to be with yourself, as yourself, by yourself, and be utterly satisfied. That is the result of true wisdom. And that is part of the Saraswati principle. She is Saraswati, and that became her name. From Satarupa, she becomes Saraswati. Um, once uh, Brahma realizes his mistake and she becomes the teacher. And so Saraswati, always seen or almost always seen on her own, happily playing her veena, the lute in English. And she is the one who flows like a river. She is the embodiment of language, wisdom, and all of the art forms, everything that is expressed and communicated through art and through language. And she can never be owned or attained. She is utterly free and independent at all times. And while creativity or the creative force is uh, endlessly variegated, there is endless possibility in creativity. Creativity also follows some patterns. There is the principle of organization embedded into that principle of creativity. So she is both that endless potential for variety and creativity, as well as the cosmic principle of order and pattern. 